All right, welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary. And we are now in 2019. Let's get the date right. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, sorry about that. Had to have a couple of things worked on to get started and get uh, taken care of here. I am just getting started today and trying to get back into the groove. You'll notice some dates change. Next week, I believe we're going to be doing this on Monday night. I'm not sure exactly, but look for some changes. We're trying to get started where I can talk to you a little bit more often, spend a little more time going through the uh, my plan and getting things worked out so that we can do a Monday market view commentary, a Tuesday more looking for some trading opportunities, and counting a Thursday as a, hey, things aren't going the way I plan. What can I do to fix them? You're going to get back into shape here. But okay. What I want to talk about is usually what happens this time of the year. This time of the year, people are set on goals. They're making changes. They're working harder to do better the year over last year. That'd be the best way to say it, right? They're going to make uh, better returns, better results. So if I can work with you guys a little bit, let's talk goals this week. We're going to talk goals next week. What are some goals we have? in regard to the stock market. <laughs> and David, you just fell right into my trap. So David makes the comment, make more money. And I'm going to politely have another one. Odd. Have a positive return. So it's interesting. And I said both of you kind of fell into my trap. What if I tell you that's not really a goal, that's a wish? And that wish is at the top of your list because there's a lot that has to go into making more money. There's a lot that has to go into making a positive return. In fact, as I've been talking to most people, make more money, has a positive return. That is what I hear hands down is the number one goal for 2019. But... What's missing? How to get there. And it's amazing because as I've talked to probably a couple dozen people in that 25 to 30 range, the how to get there, the, the part of how to make more money, how to make a positive return is not there. There's nothing underneath that pinnacle goal or wish, as I talk to most people, on how to get there. In fact, unfortunately, most have closed out, can't type, closed out losing trades and are now starting with less money. So not only, and David, I'm going to kind of pick on you a little bit here. Not only do they want to make more money, but they have less money to do it with. So David, if I can talk to you and Maude, if I can talk to you, and it looks like Richard, you also made a comment that was right in those lines. Let me see what else. Let me see what else. Uh, Richard, Steve, David, and Maude, you're all on the same lines. What are you going to do to get there? What are the underlying or the shorter term goals that get you to where you want to be? <laughs> Mod's my favorite. 
Guys, I'm sorry. Mod's my favorite. <laughs> uh, Steve, that is a pretty good uh, comment that you're not sure. And you know what? That's at least being honest with yourself. And David, that is, that's another interesting comment. Uh, David said, uh, start with a new program or a better program, which worries me because, David, that means everything you've done in the past, if you can't stand by your system or you can't remain disciplined, to your system, then the system doesn't work. And that's the point I'm trying to get across tonight. Uh, I will admit last year was my worst year ever. My last year was the worst year that I had as a whole. Um, it was probably my most difficult, but my system's in place. I still have a lot of cash for people to go back into positions. We've made up a lot of the downside. In fact, if it's okay with you, let me go through my collar trade system. If you have a $100 stock, How much money is at risk? If you have a hundred dollar stock, how much money is at risk? Come on, guys. Not a trick. There you go. $100. Right? Pretty simple. So, if you have 500 shares times You have $50,000 at risk. It's what it is. It's, it's pretty simple. It's, it's everything you need. It's right there. I get it. I see. Some people will tell me, well, Kevin, not every penny's at risk, which could be true. Maybe not every penny is at risk, as if you're going to lose every single position or part of it. But every penny's at risk, whether you care to admit it or not. So we buy. The long put for usually 7% or $7 for out, actually for 12 weeks. New cost basis is equal to your stock plus the $7. So it's now $107. What's your new risk in the trade? What's the new risk in your trade? There you go. Dang, you guys are good. 
<laughs> dang it, dang it, dang it. I thought I was going to trick you. You're right. Usually if you buy the $100 strike long puts, right, to sell at 100 minus 107 equals a negative $7. But did a lot of stocks hold on one second? Oh, sorry. Ooh, I actually think I'm right. <laughs> I see a couple of you typed in wrong. Am I wrong? <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to trick you. If you buy a stock and you buy the right to sell it at the price you bought it at, then... What is your risk? It's only seven dollars. So here's my next question. Did a lot of stocks fall 40% last year? Yes, of course. You know what? Look at some of the things we trade. Apple, Baidu. Did some fall? 20%. Oops, sorry. Let me stick this one there. Bank of America, Facebook. Disney, Visa. Ford fell 35%. Amazon fell, Google fell. Yeah, I, I mean, plain and simple, a lot fell. It was ridiculous. It was brutal. With that said, though, as I take a peek at some of my issues, I'm in the trough. I'm in the trough 
towards the bottom, I believe. And it's not on everything, but it's on a lot. I had someone tell me my system didn't work. And as I talked with that individual, I disagreed. I had some $250,000 portfolios. The stock positions were down over $100,000. Yet their portfolios were not. So, with this said, I had to do a, a little explanation and just say, hey, in all reality, it was obviously not one of my best years. My worst year. I understand that. But that does not mean that there is something wrong. It doesn't mean the system doesn't work. What it means is we are in the bottom or the trough portion on some stocks. It's that simple. Weather the storm. Well, Kevin, if this was your worst year, what was the problem? Well, the problem was we didn't have anything that came back at all. Nothing came back. It's coming back now. Four didn't come back. Uh, Facebook, Bank of America, Baidu, Apple, none of them came back. But they're on their way right now. Apple and Baidu, probably a Chinese trade agreement, we're good to go. Bank of America, I'm not sure. I watched Facebook, not Facebook, Wells Fargo and JP Morgan both lay an egg today and uh, they did pretty well. Maybe it's been beaten up long enough. Facebook, ridiculously low, still huge opportunity. Ford, ridiculously low, overbeaten, beaten up beyond belief. Not I don't know. I, I I don't. I guess I just don't understand. God, I'm really struggling tonight with what to tell you. I don't understand why people sometimes get caught in the middle and they give up. There's no reason to. There's no reason to. Just let the process work. And when you let that process work, you're going to be in better shape. Something that is very important that maybe is not being said. Wow, getting some bad, let's say. We still have lots of cash collected from the insurance to buy more shares. If we have 500 shares and add another 100, at $80 a share, we now have a $58,000 cost basis divided by divided by 600 
Let's do some math. 58,000 divided by 600. Maybe I'm doing that wrong. Let's see. 100 times 80, 8,000. So 58,000 divided by 600. Put your cost basis down to $96. Well, Kevin, that's not great. I agree it's not great. It's much easier to do with 1,000 shares. But sometimes you can't buy 1,000 shares at $80. But we have another 100 shares. The 50,000 didn't go down to 40,000. The 50,000 went down 3,500 not 10 grand. We make up 65% of the downward movement. We have another 600 shares, where if it comes back to the 100 mark, it'll equal with another 100 shares, it will be 60K, more dividends. And if it gets to, let's say 120, you then will only, you'll then have $72,000, not just 60. It's a process. Let the process work. It's that simple. It's that simple. So Steve wrote in a question. What if I want to do better? And the short answer is if you want to do better, you can add up on puts as it goes down. But the risk is you could lose more. If you want to do better, you could add 200 shares and dollar cost average with adding more capital or dollar cost average without adding more capital. There's a lot of possibilities. If you ask me where our stocks are going to end this week, I think the buy the dippers are back. I'm going to go higher. I'm going to go higher completely based on how banks reacted today, and the fact that we have Netflix on Thursday, that even though it was up 6% today, could go even higher. The Dow. Pretty unbelievable. I wonder if it has its 5 and its 20 day. I wonder if the Dow Jones... Has its five and its 20. That would be pretty neat. I don't think it does. Although we have it on the NASDAQ. Wow, we have it on the Dow, which means we also have it on the S&P. So pretty interesting. In all honesty, we're looking at a bullish technical chart. Up over 8% from the lows. 
a bullish technical chart, but we're not above the 50 day on either one yet. And obviously, we just crossed above the 50 day today. And we technically have a bull. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, where the MP end in January? First week I did this, I thought it would be up 2%. Now I'm down. Earnings this week are the, the bank, airline, financials is what I'm trying to say. Austin, United Airlines today, JP Morgan, um, Wells Fargo. Tomorrow, USB, Goldman Sachs, BlackRock. AAA technically still starts. We do have Bank of America tomorrow as well. We have Schwab on Thursday with Morgan Stanley and American Express, as well as Netflix, which is a bellwether. First rise in national on Friday. First week of the three weeks of, of, um, of bank stocks. When it comes to economic reports, not all these economic reports are going to be out. There are some that due to the furlough are unavailable to, I guess, unavailable to, to get filled. They don't have the, the, the manpower to do so. Brexit vote today. It'll be interesting to see how futures are. I'm looking to trade, preparing for earnings, adding protective puts through earnings. I will most likely not add the covered call side. I don't want the covered calls in there to cap me to the downside. So that's where I'm I'm looking to, to do a little bit better. What else do I have for you? Uh, I've got some interesting uh, information on tax brackets. I've got the market is about to get some bad news from corporations when it can't meet its its targets due to the lack of tax stimulus. And I have the dip buyers moving on the S&P 500. Three very interesting articles that I would suggest you all spend some time going through and reading. Uh, what questions do you have for me today? What questions can I answer for today? Or should we just call it a day since I'm not doing a really good job of talking? <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting tongue-tied. Maybe I'm a little out of practice. Three weeks, I'm a little out of practice at doing this. Um, we got two questions here. Why think some of the banks did so poorly? Um, so if I read through JP Morgan, um, since bonds were doing so poorly last year, they didn't, a lot of them missed on the bonds. Uh, Wells Fargo, I just think is, is run poorly. So it's run poorly. So that's the short answer.
I think they should do better. In all honesty, Maude, they should do better. They should, with the higher interest rates, make more money. It increases the spreads. They make more money on, on – uh, They make more money on their, their mortgages, their interest. I can only speak here recently that, well, I'm a little stumped last year. Last year, they shouldn't have done nearly as bad as they received credit for. And <laughs> dang it. Mod and Steve, you actually asked kind of the same question there. Do uh, you have any idea? Any idea that you could answer on maybe why banks weren't doing so well? It was cheap money. In fact, at the beginning of last year, banks and uh, banks, medical and technology are supposed to do the best. Banks have the higher interest rates, more opportunity to make money. Um Yeah, so I'm asking the increasing rates, they should have done better. They should have, but mod the increasing rates gives them a bigger spread to make money in fixed income. Gives them money in in lending and and we'll go from there. You know, I I, I don't know what to tell you. They should have done much better. And all I'm saying is we're going to go from here because it's funny. In all honesty, guess what sectors are supposed to do really good this year with a tightening? Banks, technology, and healthcare. The same three that were supposed to do good last year for an increase in, in rates are now going to do good this year with a tightening of rates. Last year, technology is supposed to do good because they were so cash full. Healthcare is supposed to do good because of um, the fact they'd be able to charge a little more for their services. Banks because of bigger spreads. Well, this year with the tightening, hey, technology is cash full. People pay whatever they need to for healthcare. Banks are now going to put that cash to use and lend more at higher rates. It's, it's just kind of ridiculous to be honest with you. They should have done significantly better. Yet the only one that seemed to do good last year was JP Morgan. Most everything else got crushed. Any other questions that I can answer for you? All right, guys. Hey, have a good evening. Sorry, I'm a little out of sorts today. Um, lack of practice. I'll do better next week. I'm not sure if we're doing it Monday or Tuesday next week. So please pay attention to your emails. And we're going to do this a little more often. We're going to have one day that's a market recap on what to look out for during the next week. We're going to have a day that's going to be a looking for opportunities and opportunity night. 
and we're going to have a a um, uh, oh crap is what I'll call it. <laughs> uh, hey, things aren't working out as their adjustment needs to be made. Since I am licensed, I can look at actual portfolios. So feel free to bring some some stuff my way. Guys, have a wonderful evening. I'll talk with you next week. I'm going to go over goals a little more finite on how to, to set yourself some goals. And we'll go from there. You guys have a wonderful evening. I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.